Just to note that this is part two of my conversation with my guest, and it's a continuation of last week's episode. There's much more that we are yet to cover in this segment, so let's dig in. I'm big on productivity and high performance, but if high performance is going to get you results and you're unhappy, then what's the point, right? So, you know, I, I think it's a lot more important for you to be happy, even if you're mediocre. Hey, you know, if you're mediocre and happy, that's a lot more said than somebody who's, you know, chasing the windmills and uh, not happy. This is the One Day Podcast. My name is Omar Al-Majali, and each week I am bringing you some of the most accomplished and inspiring minds in the Middle East and the world to give you a glimpse of their professional life and pull back the curtain a bit on the real and untold story of their success to inspire you and help you learn from those who have walked the walk so you could move one day closer to your own goals. Hope you enjoy this episode. And you just talked about personal development strategies and acquiring knowledge. I'm curious as to what does the process look like to you? I mean, you seem to be extremely knowledgeable, very well versed. I mean, you continue to tap into different avenues and areas of focuses of study. Um, and what does that process look like to you? How does Dr. Yazan progress? I'd like to take this back to first principles. So my, my own personal, and it's a work in progress, you know, and in no way it's, is it a, a, a finished anything because it's not meant to be a finished anything, you know, yeah. you're, you're an uh, ever evolving canvas, uh, but a couple of things from first principles. One, growth to me is a celebration of life. So it's not necessarily, I need to grow to attain a certain level of whatever, skill, capacity, intelligence, knowledge, so I can you know, be the man. No, it's inherently beautiful to grow because as I embrace life, I have to embrace growth because we grow. And so that's number one. Number two, I would say that a first principle premise for me is that life is beautiful. Right? Life is beautiful. And that doesn't mean I look away from all the tragedies and pain and discomfort and suffering, needless suffering. Uh, no, I can, or at least I try to hold it. All right. Because that's part of life, right? Um, so life is beautiful. It's not, it's not about creating and you know, waiting to get to the oasis, you know, it's like, like this mirage that never appears. Kind of saying life is beautiful, and you know I'm already here. I'm I'm already here, right? You know, even if I if I die today, you know, okay, cool. Um, this is what it is, you know. I'm not gonna say, uh, but wait. Well, actually, I will, of course, especially at my age. But um, <laughs> and maybe, maybe, maybe that's a a, a different uh, segue. But my personal development journey is going back to first principles, looking at the following. I mentioned uh, one, uh, that life is inherently beautiful and uh, it's beautiful to grow. And then third, what is the nature of growth, right? So there's two types of growth. There's something called hierarchical hierarchy and dominance, right? So, uh, and, and those are called dominant hierarchies where, you know, one thing separates and, you know, throws away the other thing and becomes a separate thing and sort of like, you know, I'm a CEO and you're a CFO or, you know, something like that. That's pyramidal. But actually, if you look at life, life does not grow like that. Life grows through what we call growth hierarchies, right? And these are the notions of circles and spheres. If you want to look at it from a quantum, mechanical, purely materialistic, reductionist view of science, then, you know, you see that Atoms uh, include and transcend subatomic particles, neutrons, muons, protons. And then molecules don't hate atoms, they include them. Right? So these are, it's a beautiful notion that as you're growing, you're transcending and including. 
So to me, that is the right trajectory or at least thinking around growth, that it's not about, you know, unbecoming something and throwing it away. It's about transforming that. And that becomes part of this new emergent, you know, more expanded, more whole, more conscious, more aware, more kind, more loving, best version of yourself. So to me, it has to do with my doing, my being, and my becoming, right? It's personal development. And hey, you know, whatever comes my way, uh, a guru, a course, a book, a conversation, uh, an experience, uh, a challenge, um, then, then kind of uh, bring it on, you know? But I like to think about it in a, in, a, in a framework rather than just simply, because the framework can contain, you know, whatever I choose to grow in knowledge, you know, more emotional intelligence. I want to work on this. I want to work on that. I want to focus on this, defocus that. So it becomes, it becomes a, a dance, as you said, right? And it, the point is not to reach any one particular place on the dance floor. Alan Watts uses that analogy that you don't dance to arrive at a certain point. You dance for the sake of the dance as you journey through that progressive surprising, delightful experience of life. And uh, so you can shine. So you can... The doing, the being, the becoming. Wow. Yeah, and it, you know, you can look at it from many lenses. I, I use lenses to look at things, right? So you yeah. can look at it from a lens of, you know, how am I uh, growing my mind, an open mind, my mind intelligence, right? But also how am I growing my heart intelligence or heart wisdom? And then... The doing really is about your will. It's about your, you know, third chakra, the, the, the hara, the power, you know, your digestive system. That's your second brain. It's your enteric nervous system. There are more neurons in your gut than in your brain. So, you know, sort of like alignment and creating congruency and checking in with yourself. Sort of like, hey, how am I doing? You know, am I being congruent with what I'm thinking, feeling and doing? Because it's so easy to fall out of congruency. Right. Um, so you create that alignment and you become more powerful. Yeah. Dr. Yazan, I just asked you about your personal development strategies. Now I'm curious as to how does your day look like if you have some sort of a project that you're working on or some sort of a research paper or there's something that you're working on, you're trying to get zoned in, you're trying to get focused at work. And this is a question that I ask all my guests. What is that productivity tool um, or ritual or hack that always gets the job done for you? And it, this could be a Trello board. It could be an app. It could be, you know, a notebook. Or it could be something that you do in the morning, like a morning ritual. How does that look like to you? So as you are tending to your own multi dimension dimensionality right you know your physical well-being like i need to eat and get nourished and you know and i i need to have a, a healthy diet of uh, intellectual thinking and i need to have a healthy diet of uh, fun and being silly uh, and you know all, all those so so uh, again i'm big on productivity and high performance but if high performance is going to get you results and you're unhappy, then what's the point, right? So, you know, I, I think it's a lot more important for you to be happy, even if you're mediocre. Hey, we, you know, if you're mediocre and happy, that's a lot more said than somebody who's, you know, chasing the windmills and uh, not happy. So my, my personal approach is to, 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 you know, to bring balance but also a healthy amount of um, disruption. On a daily basis, uh, I think, you know, my, my morning routine is um, I try to wake up early. Um, I, I, I wake up grateful, right? Uh, and if I'm not from Browgy, I kind of like force it, fake it till I make it, you know? So like, I actually think you're great, right? And I don't touch my phone the first thing, right? I try not to do that. I make my bed. I chug a whole bunch of water and say, wow, I am water. Like literally, I am 70% water, 
right? You know, and I'm bringing in that water. I try to create space. So I don't like to wake up and rush. Um, I try to create space in the morning. Uh, so I never have like, uh, unless, you know, certain circumstances, but I try not to have early meetings and allow a little bit of space, like an hour to just kind of be. Uh, I like sitting outside in the garden. I do in the worst an 11 minute. Uh, I'm big on the number 11. So now nice. I, I, I put a timer for 11 minutes, uh, just meditation. I, um, I do journal a lot. Nice. Lots Beautiful. of journals. Powerful. Uh, explore and set context, you know, so what is, uh, what is it that I'm going to do today that is going to move the needle forward? What can be delegated, right? What can be, so, um, yeah, that's as far as the, the kind of maybe morning ritual, um, with regards to, to, to hacks, um, you know, I'm not going to speak too much to that, but, but, uh, I would say that I change tools a lot. Right. So I explore tools. Yeah. I've used Trello. Uh, right now I just went to a simpler, you know, to-do list because that's what I need. Um, you know, if I'm working on a project that requires collaboration, I use Miro. Uh, if, uh, you know, you know, for example, journaling, I am experimenting with this new app called one day, day one, sorry. Oh, one day is the yeah. name of the podcast. Day one. one day nice. is the name of your podcast. Oh, yeah. Day one. Nice. Day uh, one, right? And what is that? Interesting... Is that like a journaling app? Yeah, it's a journaling app, right? Nice. You know, although I really love writing. You know, yeah. It's just different. But there's power to saying, you know, oh, yeah, I want to add this to, you know, my day. Um, something to remember. Uh, just you know, open the mic and, and start speaking. Ah, um, oh, so it has it, like it, that it can, feature. It can transcribe what you're saying as well. So you got it written. Um, it's, a, it's a cool, I, I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to be using it a year from now, <laughs> uh, for but I'm trying to get, year. I'm trying to get into the habit of uh, using it and being a little bit more uh, digital. And then, you know, those are periodic things, let's say. Uh, and I, I really try to be productive through other people. Right. You know, so, you know, I'll kind of empower my team, people around me uh, to get a lot more done um, and delegate, delegate, delegate. I don't believe in hard work. I believe like in, in, in the, the, the smart, intelligent, uh, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. Right. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then and then disruptions. Right. You know, uh, go out on an adventure, you know, uh, do a vision quest. Um, you know, I once spent six days on a mountain uh, without food and water, you know, as Oof, part of a nice ancient, ancient uh, South American rite of passage. Uh, six days called without a, water? The f five days, no water and, and food. And the sixth day is when we come down from the mountain. That's so, so things like that can really take you out of context, you know, change the context. It's just, you get... Wow. In, the, in, the, in, in the grind do things differently you know simple you know suggestion for for all of you uh, today tonight brush your teeth with your non-dominant hands yeah right yeah forces you to be like be present oh, wow. be present right? with the be process. present and, um so and and uh i mean look at your life as the biggest project yeah I You're David. I always say that. You know? mm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, have a positive outlook, you know, smile. Yeah, nice. Wow. Um, I love the morning ritual thing that you talked about because um, that's something that is something that's so sacred to me before I plug into the world and see what the world needs of me today. Um, I always try to dedicate an hour of um, journaling or meditating or exercise. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Keep I've got more capacity to do that during the weekends versus weekdays, but nonetheless, it's something that I that I respect. Part of your mission, uh, Doctor Yazan, is to translate all of this theoretical, if you want, knowledge and concepts that we talked about in terms of human potential and creativity and innovation. Part of what you do is translating that into practical sense, especially to organizations, so that they can leverage on their human capital to enhance their performance. So you take all this knowledge and all these, you know, theoretical concepts and you kind of translate them into practical sense by working in collaboration with organizations to what you call activating the human element. So that the, so that's like, it's a win-win situation. Can you talk to me about 
an, either an interesting project or maybe most the most recent project that you've worked on where the human element was activated and how that was able to impact an organization by and then or like the organization was able to see tangible results from this process in the professional sense um given the necessity to innovate simply right you know um we know that disruption is right around the corner uh, and businesses need to businesses and business leaders need to come to grips with that reality. You know, business as usual is not good en enough anymore, right? So we need to rethink, right? And there's again multiple dimensions that we need to explore to adequately address the conversation. Right. So a lot of times I always say, you know, one of the most important things that you need to do when you're looking at a challenge or a problem is to assess whether you are looking at it at the right level of zoom granularity, scope, context. Right. So so given that big picture of um, world is volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, it's driven by disruption you need to innovate how do you do that and the entry point is by activating the human element because you know business is 100 about people it's one of those da statement but you know there's there's insight to uncover when you really kind of dive into it because 100 of your customers are people so you need to be customer centric and then 100 of your team are people so you need to also be employee centric um so our approach and then i'll share kind of a a, a project uh, our approach is to say, um, this needs to be organic to your organization. This is about not about best practices. This is about next practices. This is about working with you, co-creating with you, so that what it means for your organization to be innovative, to emerge. Of course, we do engage in like, you know, maturity model, innovation maturity model, so we can establish, you know, what are the things that you need to look at. Uh, and we look at, you know, strategic and leadership alignment. We look at customer centricity. We look at um, resource agility. Can you recommit resources? We look at the processes and tools and structures that incentivize uh, innovation. And uh, we also look at uh, industry foresight. Uh, sort of like, hey, disruption can, you know, are we looking at the trends? So we, we look at all of these, but in the center, the heart of the matter is, is uh, people. And the way we make it practical is we say, well, to the degree that one, you take care of your people, your people will take care of you. So you need to look at culture because creativity doesn't come on demand and you can't be creative at the pointing of a gun, right? So like, I'll fire you if you're not creative. It's more about engagement, right? So that's one. And then two, you need to make sure that people are doing the things Right, not the values and the mission, and you know, embrace failure and all that stuff. Uh, but actually, on a day-to-day -day basis, are your team, your family, right, doing what we call innovation work behavior? And why focus on behavior? Because you can see it, you can you can measure it, you can have discussions around it, you can modify it to different ways, right? Now. Given that mindset produces behavior, you need to work on mindset, but behavior is your ultimate litmus test. And those are the ability of an individual and a team to be able to identify opportunity. So it's sort of like, oh, I want to be innovative and creative. Well, if you don't have capacity to, to identify opportunity in the first place, then all the brainstorming sessions are useless and pointless. Yeah. Second is where most people just get stuck, that kind of innovation and creativity is about generating ideas. So the second innovation work behavior is uh, the ability to generate ideas, IG generation. We can talk a lot more about you know, how to enhance that. But then ideas don't get, make themselves happen. You need to have champions of these ideas. These are people with uh, influence in the organization, charisma, uh, vested interests, you know, that can hold that flag and be like, we're going there, we need this resource, we need that. Even if an idea just makes perfect sense and it's promising, you know, everybody, you know, the world, it's still you're going to face resistance because it's a new thing. It's a new way of doing things. And then finally, execution, 
right? So uh, we, we look at that. Several companies that we've uh, worked with, one in uh, New York and one in Oman, actually, they're, they're kind of, I'll combine them in a, in a way. Uh, the scope was, you know, hey, you know, we had a merger and uh, we just acquired a new bank. And, um, you know, we just kind of bought uh, new capacities, basically, you know, and new channels, right? Financial services. And I like financial services because people think that, you know, th this does not apply to, you know, when you really just want to talk money, money, money. Actually, it does produce results. And uh, they wanted to be more innovative. And we came in, uh, we formed a team from within the organization. We called it uh, an innovation team, all right? You can give it whatever name you want, innovation champions. And it, this team is the, the the feelers, the listeners, right? You know, you, you need to get feedback. You can't come up with a framework and just tell them, this is the framework, implement it. You, we're design driven. So we are, again, not presuming that this is the best approach or solution, but we know what the main pillars are. And we work with this team to do assessments and stuff. And that team became the champions, right? And we uh, used, you know, high performance team concepts to form that team. We used uh, Emergenetics, uh, which is a psychometric tool that uh, we use extensively that unblocks communication in a team and really uh, allows for collaboration to flourish. Um, and then we started looking at processes and structures and, you know, and we started with one department at a time, you know, uh, we started with the customer service because we said we need to be customer centric. And customer centric is not about, oh yeah, you know, everybody's putting a smiley face. No, customer centricity is about uncovering insights. People don't know what they want. If you ask them what they want, they'll be like, uh, I don't know, uh, faster phone. Uh, they're not gonna say, you know, I want a lens in my, my eye that's connected to my neurocortex and I just kind of can project everything in my thought answer people and communicate and send messages. Um, so how do you cover, uncover insight? Uh, and um, 18 months later, we, we came back because, you know, this costs money. So you have to show ROI, right? You have to be measuring things. Some things are not measurable, but that doesn't mean they're not important. So we look at it them. But we saw like a reduction in absenteeism in the customer service, which is usually a very high turnover of around 22%, reduction in turnover of 30%. And that's huge because it oh, costs wow. you so much money to replace place yeah. employees. Yeah. Um, yeah. Customer lifetime value uh, increased uh, by 15%. Um, so there was, uh, you know, new projects and new ideas, profit from new uh, initiatives uh, rose by around 20%. So it's doable, it is doable and it's it's exciting it's just sort of like you know we're ticking differently here we're playing in the same playing field but we're playing a little bit by some of our own rules and yeah. and uh, you know we're ticking differently i always tell people and this is one of our slogans for uh, my company human engineering is that everything can be copied you know, your, your business model, your process, your product, your IP, whatever it is, everything can be copied except your people and your culture. So by going through that human conversation and then saying, yeah, but also we need processes that incentivize this behavior. So we redesigned the performance review uh, approach. Uh, we need structures by which we capture creativity. So we structured how, restructure how teams meetings are run so that they bring forth more creativity. So, um, yeah, happy to say that this is, uh, you know, an exciting kind of conversation uh, that we're we're playing in, and uh, you know, so far it's 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 going well. I love that. It's exciting. Um, I, I feel like. Uh... You were able to find your niche um, between you know all these concepts uh, that are super exciting um, that tap into human psychology, but also you know taking that and implementing it in organizations and actually creating tangible impact out of it. That's that's pretty cool, actually. Thank you. Um, an off-topic question, but I'm curious. Um, what is Dr. Riazan's fear today? And I actually thought about this question because. I feel like you're someone who's in the field of pushing 
you know, the human limit or maybe um, trusting in the unknown or basically enhancing human potential. What is your fear? Why do you think, Omar, that this is an important question to ask? Because I feel like different people have different fears and fear is something that is in all of us. Um, and I'm curious as to how does that manifest differently for different people. Um, so for someone who is in the field of, uh, in the field that you're in, I'm curious as to, yeah, what, 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 what makes you think, or maybe what scares you? Yeah. If any, um, if any. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the way I would approach this question, and needless to say, I've, I've thought about it too, right? Um, and it has changed and evolved would be first to differentiate between biological fear and sort of like more, you know, existential fear and, and right. Because biological fear is, 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 uh, Hey, nature is working, you know, uh, there's a bear and uh, you better run like hell. So, you know, if I'm caught off guard with uh, any creatures, I don't understand, or, you know, uh, my fight flight or freeze uh, mechanism would, would uh, engage and rightly so, right? Because I need to run or, um, you know, find some hiding or fight to the death. Um, Definitely so that's, not irrational fear. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about the irrational fear, not the rational justified fear. Of, yeah, so that's the biological fear, let's call yeah. it, rather than rational or irrational. And, and uh, so the, the other fear is, you know, if, if you think about fear as, a concept that through which we are able to perhaps better protect ourselves, not get hurt, right? So, so fear implies that something might hurt me, right? On, on the other side, it's sort of like, you know, it's dark there. Um, and ask, you know, what, what, what can really hurt you, right? In, in, in the existential sense, because ultimately you're going to die. So, so I think fear, the archetype of fear is, is that ultimate fear of annihilation. So you can have many different flavors of fear, but if you take the route of following the roots, it will go back into the ultimate fear of death. Thus darkness as well. So sort of like, you know, going to sleep and never waking up. What's that? What's that like? That's the ultimate frontier that beyond which you're like, you don't know. And so I have a great respect. And if you will, fear of death, because not that I'm afraid I will die because I will die. Right. And I will hopefully want to die happy, peaceful, and, you know, just kind of slip away in a dream. <laughs> um, and you know it, it's cool you're going somewhere else i actually had a, a near-death experience so uh, i felt what it was like to say all right actually this is it Oof. i'm gone this Oof. is really it i'm gone and uh what what arose was this expansion and this beauty where you know i started seeing my body where it was and uh saying wow, like I'm scared and I can't speak through my body, but I see my body, but what is watching? And it was just sort of like being sucked into a vacuum of actually this feels really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm more expansive. My sense of identity, my consciousness is embracing more and I'm, it just felt great. So I'm not particularly afraid of that process, um, but I have respect and fear for death because that's the ultimate fear, right? And by facing that in a society that wants to make death as the enemy <laughs> how can death be the enemy uh, and putting it under the carpet like we pretend it doesn't happen and everything is about prolonging life till the last breath no i don't want to be you know incubated with uh, you know drugs up my in a sterile uh, environment just because you know i'm living I want quality of life. So, you know, there's something to be said about dying in dignity, right? And um, if 
you embrace life, you have to embrace death because the opposite of life is not death. The opposite of death is birth. And they are the cycle of life. There's death and birth. It's continuously, fractally emergence. Life is coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. You know, we go to the ground, worms eat our at least material body, and it becomes an oak tree and an olive tree, right? It's just kind of keeps on going. So, yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say that uh, at, at this point in my life, uh, maybe tomorrow I'll be like, no, I'm afraid of something. I, I was afraid uh, for a long time, I think, of, of uh, failure because I was a high performer and I just didn't want to, uh, you know, kind of lose my status. And then I realized, actually, it wasn't fear of failure. It was fear of success. You know, like, I don't know if I can handle that uh, so uh, how, did you, how did you come to that conclusion that's crazy well inquiry right you know self-inquiry yeah right? i mean a lot of these questions is not about you know the sound bite that's two minutes and the guru that's going to tell you do one two three four it's about inquiry and work and 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 you know depth of thinking and uh you know that's where wisdom emerges so it's conversation but you know between conversations i've had and questionings like well you know why am i afraid of uh you know really going all out well because i didn't want to uh, be viewed as um oh yeah you know he's been doing well but now you know he failed at this right uh, and that's sometimes a curse of high performance because on the outside, it looks like they're doing great, but then you end up taking very safe bets, jumps that you know you can cover. And yeah, people can celebrate you, but you know you're not mm, really pushing your own envelope. And then the shift and the reframe around, you know, uh, failure of success is one, you know, th there is no such thing as failure. There's only feedback, right? If you, if you gave up the first time you tried to walk, you would never have walked. So it's about in embracing experimentation. And then it's about really owning up and living up and taking ownership of what I'm, you know, my doing, being, and becoming, you know, sort of like, and it's not about any one thing. I'm not trying to define success as, you know, this one thing that I've made or created or reached. Um, I see myself as successful, uh, even if I, you know, I was broke, uh, you know, four years ago. Now I'm kind of back on my, my, my feet, not where I used to be. But even if I'm broke tomorrow, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, you know. You've I'm, been I'm, there I'm, and you've realized that it's not that big of a monster. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's kind of answered your question. You it know? did. Uh, no, it did. Um, or opened more questions. I think, you know, life ends with big questions, not answers. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love the philosophy behind it all. I mean, you're speaking my language here. In falsaf, in falsaf. La, la, in falsaf, the, the philosophy of it all. Um, um, so we're coming to the end of the conversation. Un unfortunately, there's a lot more that I wanted to cover. But, um, but the end of the conversation for my podcast is typically three rapid fire questions. And these ones I did not share with you on purpose because I liked my guests to be very impulsive. And, you know, just Shoot. tell me whatever come, comes to their mind. Hello. And my three questions are as the following. The first one is, what piece of advice would you give your younger self if you went back 20 years? Go inwards first. Although I wouldn't say that, you know, I wouldn't have realized that had I not gone outwards. Uh, so maybe, maybe it's not the right advice. <laughs> but um, yeah, go inwards first. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and be ready, you know, to really hold space and, and uh, be, be brave and courageous and, and have the power. And it's not the power that you have over something. It's the power that you have with something. Um, so, yeah, I feel, I feel, uh, you know, I was uh, doing a lot of things and, and uh, enjoying my life, you know, needless to say. Um, but had I, had I been exposed to, um, the wisdom and knowledge that I now have earlier, perhaps it would have been, uh, or maybe today I'll be 
maybe at a deeper level still. Uh, so yeah, I would say maybe maybe that. I heard this idea the other day uh, before going to my second question. I don't know if it was from you actually uh, in a podcast that I listened to or somewhere else, but I this concept that you know there's two type types of if you want growth or expansion. There's the vertical one and there's the horizontal one. And the vertical one has to do with you and the internal work and who are you on uncovering those layers. And then that kind of would manifest in the, and the external world is everything, you know, that has to do with the material world. And that is, you know, your career, um, the, the th- you know, the house you're in or whatever, like professional growth, uh, whatever that might be. And, you know, these are the two different verticals and yeah. the two different layers. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is, this is a, a topic I'm deeply curious about, which is, you know, leadership development and development in general. And when I got exposed to, to this concept, uh, I was amazed because, uh, you know, you've got horizontal development where, you know, just take a leader that's horizontally developing, you know, they're, they're, they're acquiring new apps, you know, sort of like, yeah, I can organize my time better. I'm more efficient. I'm more emotionally intelligent. I'm, you know, I, I have better frameworks to navigate new ways of making meaning and 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 uh, um, kind of organizing information, being more efficient. And there's a place for that. And 99 percent of leadership development happens on the horizontal development. If you could, everybody talks leadership development. I mean, if only you know. Uh, I can get a, a dollar for everybody that, that told me, you know, yeah, I do leadership development. Yeah, well, what the hell does that mean? But most of that happens on the horizontal level. The vertical development is much more interesting and it's actually emergent in this way that, you know, it's how we actually develop and evolve. And it's a sense, you know, imagine a ladder and you're on one rung of the ladder and you take a step up the ladder. You know, you, you, you haven't changed place, but you have, a new perspective on the world. So vertical development is sort of like upgrading your operating system altogether. It's upgrading the way you make meaning. It's developing capacities to hold paradox. It's not just simple left and right. It's developing capacities that can hold your own desires, feelings, dreams, and aspirations, and and connect that to to a bigger conversation and and, and meaning. Uh, Your sense of identity grows. So, you know, all four... Uh, both vertical and horizontal development, but vertical is just, uh, you know, uh, so much more exciting. Exciting. A lot to uncover there. The second question is, what tip or hack would you give um, to anyone out there who's trying to achieve a goal? And even if that tip or hack can get them one day closer to that goal, and it has to be like one hack, one thing, what would that be? You know what? And and uh, perhaps this is this is uh, <laughs> relevant to your podcast as well. Uh, the one hack would be the following: one, you may reach your goal splendidly and still be miserable. So if you're trying to reach that goal to fill some void, not saying don't have goals. Uh, worthy goals even right audacious goals but if that framing is 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 there then uh reframe take a deeper look right you can still hold that goal in your mind uh, but not tie it to your self-worth uh and to your you know success or happiness and The other hack I would say is that goals are necessarily future oriented, right? And I would say the future doesn't exist because nobody's ever gone there, came back, neither the past. So so I would say, you know, and maybe I'll play on the words of the name of your podcast. I would say that one day, comma, today, because, because the one day, can never come but today is here and you know th- this is where 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 the the rubber is already hitting the road you know what are you doing today one thing one thing that moves the needle one thing you don't have to put a masterpiece on the canvas you just have to put a drop of ink today on the canvas and before you know it it's a masterpiece you know so 
get off your butt and, and, and put some ink on your canvas. And it's today, it's not one day. One day can be uh, kind of wishful thinking. So you're like, yeah, one day, you know, but when, 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 when is one day today? Mm. So you're saying it's a, movement, momentum, action. Movement, momentum, um, you know, definitely. Nicely said. Definitely. Nicely said. The third and the final question to you, uh, Dr. Yazan, is what is it that you wish to accomplish one day? And, you know, speaking of, um, and you could start the sentence with one day I would like to, or one day I wish I could, or one day I. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, I'm going to take... Uh, uh, you know, the fifth amendment on that one and answer very differently because, <laughs> because that's my whole, uh, you know, thesis of you, if you will, I would say that one day today, I am super grateful that I am having this conversation with you and that today in this moment is my ultimate purpose. My purpose nice. is to be here today and accomplish this, this conversation uh, and engage with you and, uh, you know, with the people, uh, the minds and the hearts of people that are uh, listening. So, yeah, I, I would leave it at that. Love it. And not to say that I don't have very strategic goals. I, I know, want to, I know. To, but that's the first uh, hit. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll take a left fielder on that. <laughs> and I think that's the perfect ending uh, that wraps up the conversation. Uh, I didn't expect any less uh, of an answer from you. Uh, this is amazing. But, Yanni, what you're saying is essentially that we always, our purpose in life is just to be present in this moment and to give it our all and, you know, feel the fulfillment of whatever we're doing right now. Um, I think that's powerful, to be honest. Not easily done, but a powerful concept. Um, Dr. Yazan, thank you so much for the extreme value you brought in today. I think we've covered a lot of ground, which is why I knew that this was going to, I mean, be split into a two-part conversation. There's going to be two episodes on this. And I wasn't going to compromise on the wisdom that I knew that you were going to offer to the beautiful um, listeners and audience uh, of, of the podcast. Where can people find you on social media, Dr. Yazan, or if they want to find the work that you're doing or they want to follow um, your update? Yeah. Um, I'm not a social media guy. Uh, not know, yet. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. And, uh, but that being said, you know, it's also about, you know, me realizing that some of the, you know, kind of near term girls goals I have require me to be more out there. So I'm going to activate a Twitter and, uh, but I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I have a website called human engineering.co CO. Uh, that's the name of the company. And, um, you know, so I, I'm kind of out there, you know, I, uh, I don't mind sharing my email as well. And uh, you can you can find me if you want to. Um, and uh, I want to tell you thank you, because, um, you know, this is this is uh, a very interesting conversation yeah. and uh, <laughs> that that I feel uh, especially in our region of the world, you know, uh, in the MENA, and I know you have uh, listeners from all over the globe, uh, and this conversation is universal. Um, but I do think, you know, it, it's time to uh, get a lot of these um, tools and 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 uh, thinking out there, so that we can we can challenge how we're we li how we're living, you know, what we're doing how we're being and, and what we're becoming. Um, and uh, so I want to thank you for Perhaps. opening that space and uh, doing the work. I know you don't need to do this work, uh, but you choose to. And, you know, why you choose to is a, is a heart intelligence, is a, is a wisdom beyond your rational mind, because you don't know what's going to end up happening from your podcast eventually. Yeah. Uh, but you're following uh, that trail and that intuition. Um, and I'd like to, to um, we can work on that, uh, you and I later, and you can share uh, this in your description of the podcast. Yeah. But, um, you know, I do believe in tools that can enhance our capacity to self-know and to be more effective and efficient and, you know, uh, also, you know, work on our creativity. So uh, at Human Engineering, we currently have two digital products. One is a psychometric tool called Emergenetics. Beautiful, very powerful, very practical tool uh, that can be used standalone for you to know yourself better and know, you know, what your preferences and thinking and behaving are. Uh, but also allow you to really take conversation to next level when you talk about high performance and collaboration. 
And the other is a creativity course called Creatively You. So I, I'd love to offer you a, a coupon. Uh, we can nice. agree with so generous of you. Later, and um, you know, yes. people can go to the website and uh, use that coupon for a, a generous uh, discount nice. on uh, on those, and uh, hopefully that will be of uh, of value. Thank you so much. Uh, that's so generous of you, uh, Doctor Yazan. And I'll drop that in the description of the podcast. Um, you can find more information on that uh, once we get to the details. Me and Doctor Yazan. And uh, again, thank you for your time and pleasure. And hopefully, it won't be our last time. Hopefully not, my friend. Uh, you know, have a wonderful day. And uh, wh- wherever you are, uh, and however you are uh, listening in, um, you know, there's great, great, great uh, wisdom in getting to simple. So keep it simple. And, uh, but but that requires some, some you know, inquiry and, you know, enjoy, uh, enjoy the journey and challenge yourself, do a reframe and, um, you know, good luck. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you were able to pick up a thing or two that could help you in business or life. If you would like to hear more conversations like these and you're not yet a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe through your preferred podcast platform and follow us on Instagram at one day dot the podcast and you could reach me on my personal instagram account at o al majali and last but not least if you prefer to watch the full episode on video then you can do so on our youtube channel one day the podcast till next time